So I'm still mourning over the loss of my most stunning mistress from uh, Sant'Agata Bolognese, the Lamborghini LP 550-2. But I'm still doing the job, and I'm here driving crossover. So let's get the boring stuff out of the way. 200 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. Now, if I'm telling you that 369 pound-feet of torque out of a 2.1 liter four-cylinder engine is boring, that means there's something behind the scenes that we're not seeing. So I know me and Gene has talked to you guys about friction and it really being the enemy of efficiency. And in the Mazda that he kind of gave you the example on, they coated the pistons to lower the friction. Mercedes, they felt that was too pedestrian. So what they're doing is putting roller-bearing balance shafts to lower the friction. And there's a side benefit to that. When you're sitting in the car and driving it, you don't feel any vibration through the steering wheel. Really a fantastic application here. So really what it's all about is 1800. Remember that number, 1800. That is when you hit peak torque. And remember, torque, 369 pound-feet. So you're in a car that really, it's 52%, are bought by women. But if you can hit, almost 370 pound-feet of torque at 1800 RPM, there is no reason more men shouldn't be buying a car like this. So now like our friends at Ginzo used to say, but wait, there's more. Who likes racing? If you're to go racing, it's all about compression ratio. So let's go back to the 60s, 70s, and if you were to build your own, say, Corvette drag race car, and you're gonna go out to Englishtown, New Jersey, you're gonna be looking for what? 13 to one, 14 to one, somewhere around there. This, if I'm really being honest, is kind of an overglorified baby buggy. 16.2 to 1 in a four-cylinder engine. Then you get out on the highway and you'd swear you, you don't know you're driving a diesel. You would you definitely wouldn't say you're driving a four-cylinder engine. And it kind of begs the question, Mercedes has brought this thing over first in the GLK. And was that a smart thing or was it a dumb thing? Because I'd be hard pressed to say, yeah, go buy the V6 over this. In fact, the 4 diesel is just a shade cheaper than the 4 V6. So really, why would you buy the V6? So the system works with two turbochargers and they work in sequence with each other. There's one that's got small veins on it that gives you power at low RPM, so when you want to take off from the light, and there's a second one that's got bigger veins that gives you power for passing. This is very similar to what you'd see on, say, an AMG or most high-performance turbos. And here, this is an economy engine. But what's more interesting about this engine is it can be tuned differently because of those two different turbochargers. Like, the same engine is going to go into the Sprinter, and it'll have, instead of 200 horsepower, it'll have 160 horsepower and 250 pound-feet of torque. But then it's also going to go in the E-Class, and instead of 200 horsepower, it's going to have 195 horsepower, but still 369 pound-feet of torque. So the reality is, by giving you this engine two different turbos, it gives you the opportunity to tune it for different applications. Did you know the fuel economy on this Mercedes beats out its competition? And when I say competition, I'm thinking the likes of the Evoque, the um, Audi Q5. Actually, the Q5 hybrid comes close but it's still a 10% difference from this. But what's really interesting is not the MPG. What's interesting is the cost. If you were to put them all on a spectrum, the Mercedes is kind of the, the cheap one in terms of money-wise. Not the car itself, but the money. So will someone tell me what kind of a world we live in where the Mercedes is the value proposition? So click here to watch one of our 250 other episodes, click here to subscribe, and can we ask you guys a favor? Can you watch these within the first 36 hours? Because it gets us more views, which gets us more dollars, which gets you more episodes. And of course, follow us, Motoman TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'll see you guys next time.